differently. A story well told has the power to do many things. Stories can help us develop insights, feel less alone, or even provide us with a sense of belonging in the world. Some stories, however, have the power to go beyond this, perhaps to the point of impacting one's life. One such story for me is that of the first season of True Detective. I don't think I have ever been as hypnotized by a piece of art the way I was with True Detective. Not only was I captivated by the story, characters, and the theme, but the show proved to be deeply meaningful and highly personal to me. True Detective has gone on to gain a considerable amount of prestige since the series' conclusion, but an often underappreciated aspect of the show is the final episode, more specifically its final scene, which is going to be the topic of today's video. This is my installment of One Last Scene, the latest in a YouTube trend started by Nando V Movies, so I would like to thank him and everyone else who has participated up until this point. I hope that I am able to provide a worthwhile entry. I, like many others, am fascinated by the character of Rust Cole. In fact, he has become something of a folk hero to me over the years. There are many layers and nuances to Rust's characterization in True Detective, but for the sake of this video, we are only going to focus on his philosophy. In episode one of True Detective, Rust tells Marty that he considers himself to be a realist, but philosophically he is probably more aligned with that of pessimism. And it is true that much of Rust's personal beliefs can be traced back to the likes of Arthur Schopenhauer and Emile Chiron, who are a couple of pessimistic philosophers. A big influence on Rust's character in True Detective was the works of Thomas Ligotti, who is a pessimistic cosmic horror writer. And if you haven't, I would highly recommend reading The Conspiracy Against the Human Race, if that is something that interests you, because there is so much in that book that clearly informs the character of Rust Cole. Throughout the eight episodes of the show, Rust reveals a worldview that is absolutely dour. Rust believes that life has no meaning or value. And this sort of school of thought is probably more closely aligned with that of existential nihilism, and I do think there is an element of nihilism to Rust's character. Rust is a man who believes that life has no meaning or purpose. Rather, we are all born into an unnatural existence, doomed to suffer because of our conscious experience as human beings. Rust also subscribes to antinatalism, which is a philosophical school of thought that argues procreating is morally wrong. There are several reasons that antinatalism makes for not having children, but if I were to try and sum it up as best as I could, what I would say is that antinatalism argues that all humans are born without their consent. And yes, I realize that we cannot consent to being born, but the fact is, none of us asked for this. And because we are born without our consent, we are born into a life that is inevitably going to entail suffering. And because we are going to suffer in life at some point, the only true reprieve from that suffering is our equally inevitable demise. With all this being true, and within the school of not only pessimism, but antinatalism and even nihilism, with all of this being an ontological fact that life has no meaning, we're going to suffer, and we're going to die, 
then it's better to just not exist at all. Rust believes that the only way to escape from pain is to not exist. Thus, mere existence is torture by virtue of the fact that there is going to be suffering. So, if Rust is a man that believes life has no inherent meaning or purpose, why do his actions continuously fly in the face of what he claims to believe? Because what I find most interesting about this first season of True Detective is that all the self-proclaimed nihilists fail to realize something. Rust does not believe a single thing he is saying. Rust's pessimism and existential nihilism are constantly contradicted by his actions. If he believes that life has no meaning or value, why does he constantly fight to protect it? His very job is to preserve human life and all that is just. As the mystery of the King in Yellow and the Tuttle Cult takes place, shape within the narrative, Rust develops an obsessive drive to put a stop to their criminal wrongdoings. He never once questions his motives. It doesn't matter if he encounters doubt, resistance, or any other obstacles. He never bothers to ask himself or question whether what he's doing is right, because deep down he knows that his actions are right. Despite the fact that he believes none of this is worth anything, he is fighting to protect the lives of the women and children that may be victimized by the Tuttle Cult and the King in Yellow in the future. For all of his pain, grief, and existential angst, Rust is still able to act within the world. He is able to do so with intentionality, efficiency, and purpose, and this is one of the most fascinating aspects of his character to me, because all too often, slipping into this sort of existential nihilism, at least for some people, can result in truly severe depression, because there is no real apparent cause for it. It's not a chemical imbalance or a set of circumstances in your life that has gone deeply wrong, this is a depression that is born out of a crisis of meaning. And that is exactly what Rust is going through in True Detective, and yet he is still able to act within the world, which is something that people really struggle with when they adopt this kind of worldview. Rust is a man who has absolutely nothing governing him in terms of his obligations in life. He's not married, he doesn't have kids, he doesn't have any sort of social norms that he prescribes to that he feels obligated to project to the world. And yet Rust is a man who is ruthlessly self-disciplined. Conversely, when you look at Marty, he is a man who is full of obligations, and yet he is the biggest hypocrite in the show. Marty has obligations to his wife Maggie, to his family, his faith, his career, and in some way he always upends those obligations. He does not feel the responsibility to actually commit to any of them. He is the complete opposite of discipline. He is impulsive, and we see him act impulsively throughout the show. Whereas Rust, a man who is supposed to be devoid of all hope, he continuously acts not only with intention but with such strong conviction that one would think, based on their differing worldviews, this kind of action and behavior should be coming from Marty. So why would Rust serve a community that he willingly isolates himself from? Well, in the first episode, the audience also learns that Rust lost his daughter when she was still extremely young, and the loss of their child resulted in the subsequent dissolution of Rust's marriage. He is a man that has lost everything, 
it only makes sense that after losing everything he cares about, that Russ would embark on a desperate search for meaning and value in a world that will never provide those answers. Rust has suffered a spiritual and emotional death. Someone once told me that nihilism is an excuse to never care about anything. And those words still have a profound effect on me to this day. The more individuated we become in terms of our ideology and philosophy, the more lonely and painful life becomes. The closer we get to truth in terms of the grand cosmic scale of the universe, the further we move away from me. At the end of the show, Rust and Marty defeat the Yellow King and expose the secrets of the Tuttle cult. Unfortunately, they are able to completely stop the broader conspiracy that is taking place within the narrative. In fact, if you were to look at the ending of the show on a more surface level, one would think that what Rust and Marty did was barely a drop in the bucket. And in some ways it was, but does that mean that it was all for naught? Of course it doesn't. The final scene of True Detective sees Rust reject his former pessimistic ideology. While he was in a coma, Rust appears to have had a mystical experience. An experience of pure awareness, that of complete transcendence. This is not an uncommon experience to have when one has been in a near-death situation. It's also been very well known to happen while people take psychedelics, very experienced meditators have had mystical experience, and there are certain types of breath work, like holotropic breath work, that can induce these states of consciousness. As a result of this experience, Rust finally lets go of his nihilism. For the first time in the show, we see Rust show genuine emotion. This signals to the audience that he is now ready to move on. There can be an acknowledgement of the darkness, but the light is always there. True Detective is not a show about how cool it is to be a nihilist. Rather, True Detective serves as a cautionary tale, and I would argue that the entirety of the show and the character of Rust Cole serves as an argument against nihilism. We are all part of the same story. Light versus dark. It looks to me like the light's winning. As far as fictional characters are concerned, Rust Cole means more to me than almost any other. His character arc that unfolds throughout True Detective is not only profound, but it is something that we can all learn from. The final scene of True Detective is one of the most beautiful and poignant scenes in television history. The transformation that Rust undergoes is, in my opinion, incredibly transcendent. And for anyone who has been in even a remotely similar situation to Rust, I think that is the reason this final scene is so impactful. Because the final scene of True Detective is not saying that there is no bad aspects to life. It's not saying that we are not going to ever experience pain. Rather, what the ending is saying is that, of course there is darkness. It's always going to exist. It's always there. But because that darkness exists, so does the light. There has to be an acknowledgement of the light. And those people that are able to hold that belief will be able to walk a more enlightened path. And given this show's focus on philosophy, I think that is incredibly apropos and one that I will never forget. Thank you for watching. If this interested you at all, please uh, subscribe, like the video, and share. If I thought about doing a video about the entirety of this first season of True Detective, it would be a much, much longer video. But again, I would just like to thank Nando V Movies for setting this whole thing up. Thank you for inviting anyone to participate. It means a lot. And I will see you guys next time. Peace, plants, Namaste.
Didn't you tell me one time at dinner, once maybe about you used to you used to make up stories about the stars? I know we ain't in Alaska, but it appears to me that the dark has a lot more territory. Yeah. You're right about that. You know, you're looking at her on the sky thing. How's that? Well, once there was only dark. When you ask me, the lights went in. <laughs> 